more like family. We're pretty cool people though. Cool people are the best people. It's a, it's a lifestyle, right? I think we're just a group of like-minded people. Don't, don't um, talk about it. Okay. The there. first rule of... Hey everybody, welcome to another Kilby Live video. We're off to QuailCon 2022. We set up our tent last night and then we came home to get some stuff done that we had on the list and then I was gonna go back and then we, I got a flat tire. <laughs> then I fixed my tire and then I was doing some nightly chores and then I stepped on a rabbit hay holder and uh, it went through my crock and into my foot and then I stepped on my broken foot and like jacked it all up again, so. Here we go. So, are you excited about QuailCon? Yes, I remember last year and it was very enjoyable and it was fun. It was interesting, yeah. Looking forward to the most this year? I think today, Saturday, there is another day where there's gonna be more like things to do and like fun things to do and tours and all that kind of stuff. And then tomorrow, Sunday, will be more talking and inf informative um, stuff, which I think will be cool because I feel like last year, it was mostly the informative stuff. Like there's a bouncy house and stuff, but it was mostly in the informative stuff. You kind of go into these things like, you're gonna see if you can learn anything. It was like, I've watched tons of videos. I've raised quail and it's like, am I gonna learn anything? And I walked away going like, wow, I know nothing. <laughs> I learned so much, so I, it's gonna be that. It's gonna be like that this year. I guarantee it. There's everyone's gonna learn a bunch of stuff about quail that they did not know, and I mean, there's a little bit for everyone. You know, just small farmers, big farmers, people just you know, like having them as as their best friends. <laughs> I ran into a Jasmine Bass, right? Ah, yes. You run what page? You run uh, self-sufficient quail with yeah. Zach. Did you get into yeah. quail? Yeah, so I got into quail uh, as an accident. So I was bartering, I had some turkey poults and this lady had quail and I was like, you wanna trade? Okay. Uh -huh. And so I jumped in without knowing anything mm -hmm. and then I had to go learn everything. So that's literally yeah. what started, but what keeps me going is it's actually something that I can do myself because my husband and I in our homestead and he works full time and I homestead full time. So mm -hmm. it comes to like, putting food on the table, I needed something to be able to process. And so that is the quail. I can do that by myself in the kitchen and you know, and I just, they're fascinating, they're exciting. So and they're they easy. keep me here. They're so easy. easy. They're so Very easy. Forgiving and, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, who doesn't love fluff nuggets when they hatch out of the egg? Oh, I yeah. mean, they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. How many quail do you got or are you allowed to tell? Uh, well, Prior to QuailCon, we had about 200. Oh, wow. Okay. And let's just say about half of those made it to the freezer. Okay. So we keep about 100 to 200 at a time. And a lot of those are helping to reproduce for people locally for us. And then um, way too many eggs, though. So. Way too many way eggs? Way too many eggs. <laughs> yeah, so if you're in the, you know. Southwest Missouri area. Yeah, the Southwest Missouri area. Uh -huh. Someone's got some eggs. I have a whole huge stack they of just, them at home too. Just look for the pile of eggs coming yeah. out of the house. My now. wife has been just taking them and like cutting them and and uh, putting them in a mason jar. Yeah. Just like and then so we can just pour them out. Yeah. You know, so it's a little bit quicker sometimes. That's but awesome. Is uh, raising quail a cult? Uh, I mean, it could be construed as that. Yes. I mean, we're pretty cool people though. Okay. Quail people are the best people. I should back up and see the dance. <laughs> I'm the worst right. dancer. <laughs> and this is why you bring out cameras. Yes. So people act like themselves. Yeah. yeah, no, that's me. All day, every day. I'm here with Katrina from So and Tear. Make sure and check her YouTube channel out. Thank you. So you were just telling me you're a biologist? I'm a wildlife biologist by trade. Do you raise quail? I have quail. I have quail in two separate aviaries they're on deep litter mm -hmm. so deep litter is just it's wood chips from the tree trimmers and i have it in there it's a carbonaceous diaper yeah <laughs> um, as joel salton likes to say yeah. 
and one of them is just that and then I have a second aviary which I call the raviary because there's rabbits oh, okay. over quail. I thought, I thought you were gonna say there's a bunch of music and lasers. <laughs> that was the point is a fun name <laughs> but it's it's rabbits over quail okay. um, and I have aviary netting under the rabbits so that the quail when they jump they don't bump their heads. Okay, yeah. So that's working out really well I just have to scoop in the poop. How many quail do you have? How many quail do I have? You're not allowed to tell the truth though. No, I actually <laughs> might not know. <laughs> Would you recommend raising quail to anybody? Absolutely. And why, I guess. So quail are super easy. Look over here. <laughs> quail are super easy and from egg, from hatching to meat is eight weeks. You can eat them sooner if you want. They're always edible. Might be a little more crunchy. <laughs> Which is crazy, by the way. It's how, crazy. How, how quick and how sustainable it is. How, and then also it's all dark meat. So if you're one of those people that love dark meat, you don't even have any white meat. If you want white meat, have rabbits, because that's what I do. <laughs> it doesn't dry out that easy and the fat tastes good. It doesn't dry out <laughs> um, and you can cook it different ways. You can skin them or I use a drill attachment uh, plucker for that. Okay. But actually, honestly, we skin them now. It's, it's, so <laughs> it's much just faster. easier. It's yeah. faster. Um, we we pluck them sometimes, but we skin them, and then um, it's just so easy, and they're entertaining as heck, uh -huh. especially in an aviary set setting. Oh. We have one gentleman that likes to give when they find they crumble, or they, they find a pellet. He's like calls over the ladies and and he's like gee, 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 gee. and they come over and he's very gentlemanly and he lets them have the pellet. <laughs> it's so funny to watch their their antics in the aviary setting. So easy to take care of. It literally takes me poop control or poop. It takes me five minutes, you know, once a week to manage poop in an aviary setting with deep litter. Much different than every day with poop tray. I don't know what you have, but it's um, so I I actually. I have some inside, I have some outside, uh -huh. um, depending on the year, but the time of year. But I have poop trays, but I, I put um, hardwood fuel pellets mm -hmm. that I had left over from growing mushrooms it, down in there, and it, it like it just starts breaking down immediately, and it doesn't smell as much. Good, yeah. So those tricks of the trades. Yeah. So I'm asking everyone this question: Is raising ca uh, quail a cult? A cult. <laughs> I, I, it's, a, it's a lifestyle, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a cult. I think it's something everybody's going to be ending up doing. You know, backyard chickens is is just a you know accepted thing, and I think that that's going to be the way quail goes. Yeah. It's been quail about four years now, mm -hmm. and and I got into it because I don't I didn't have the ability to raise chickens, right? And now that I got I'm in it town in the, too, right? I'm in town and. <laughs> And I'm like, well, this is so easy. Why isn't everyone doing this? Now I have eggs all the time. Yeah. It's something that's super yeah. sustainable. They're they're easy. They're forgiving. You know, they're not the smartest animals. You know, sometimes it seems like. I think they are smarter in an aviary. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> probably, probably in the cage. Probably. <laughs> they have more to do. But you know, a lot of my uh, audience these days have like, have you heard of the, the carnivore diet? Yes. So I went on one. I'm, I'm like 160 days in on it, and so I'm like, well. People on the carnivore diet, you can eat quail and you get you get these eggs too. Like and the eggs are amazing. And it's something you can raise yourself, and so you know, you know what you're feeding them and how sustainable it is, and just be closer to your food. Especially which is with amazing. prices too. Oh yeah, yeah. Prices. I mean. Yeah. What do you see? They went in front of the big pig. Look at that bacon and sausage. <laughs> What'd you get? Um, cheeseburger. What'd you get? Hot dogs. Deliciousness. Here, I'll do your buzzer. Pull pork sandwich. She also got a pull pork sandwich. We're out here at QuailCon 2022 in Miamisburg, Ohio, at a quail farm called Myshire Farm in Miamisburg, Ohio. Now this quail farm is right in my backyard. Ironically, when I got into quail, I got onto Craigslist and drove like an hour and a half away to a little sketchy house, <laughs> little farm, and bought some quail. And then right after that, I found out there was a quail farm just right down the street from where I live, essentially 15 minutes away. So this is the second annual quail con last year. 
was amazing. It was it was just great, and this year has been pretty awesome already. Met a bunch of people. I've already been able to do a couple of interviews today. I want to make sure you check out everyone's web pages and uh, like their YouTube channels. Yeah, this quail community. I keep asking everyone, is it a cult? <laughs> it's a joke, right? But once you get into quail, you just realize how sustainable it is and how easy it is to raise them and how fast you get meat and eggs from them. And if you are trying to get closer to your food, know where it comes from, understand, you know, life and death cycle, just want to know what's going into the meat that you're eating, quail is an easy way to do it because you don't need a big farm to do it. You could do it in a very small space and within eight weeks, six, eight weeks, you got eggs and meat. <clears throat> and you can just turn it over very easy, very for very forgiving. Did he smell? Knock knock. Who's there? Quail. Quail who? Quail poo. <laughs> People have drove from all over the United States of America to come out here to Miamisburg, Ohio. It's it's an amazing thing. I don't think I've ever been camping. Maybe once or twice in my life that it hasn't rained, so my bad. I brought the rain with me. I think it's more and more important each day as the world gets a little a little bit more crazy that we try to take control of our food supply. And I'm not a conspiracy theory type guy, doom and gloom type of guy, but I just I just think it's becoming a lost art, if that makes sense. It's it's, it's becoming a lost thing where people are connected to their food and they understand how much hard work is put into it, how much sacrifice, how much love. The fact that something has to die for you to live. The planning. I never thought I would be sitting here at a, a quail convention. <laughs> I'm just a city boy. I don't know that much about farming and farming stuff like that. My kinfolk never taught me none of that stuff. Happened upon this way of living out here in good old Ohio. out here uh, well it's not it's wet <laughs> so we're out here at quail con and we're with brandon and Kristen from whiskey tango farms yep. and they're going to tell us a little bit about their farm yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead so we're located in wisconsin right smack dab in the middle um we sell quail catching eggs we ship nationwide my husband makes some um, uh stacking egg trays and he does some lasering home mm -hmm. decor and such yeah, so the latest editions of the slate coasters. Yeah, we co-host QuailCon with My Shire. Of course, it's here at My Shire, but yep. we're super excited. This is the second year, and it's definitely more than we ever expected. Like, it's I'm yeah, so it's glad to do this. Fun, fun meeting everybody uh, this week and everything. Um, seeing a lot of faces uh, that are on our lives and everything. Uh, it's been awesome. So you know. I've been slack, and I haven't. I never make any of the live stuff. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> that's what they're recorded for, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, we'll be talking tomorrow for the classes. We'll be talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. genetics and some yeah. tips on celadons and stuff. So I'm excited about that. And we're like, Why quail? <laughs> Why not quail? Okay, that's yeah. Quail. That should be it. Quail. That's like, that should go on another shirt. Yeah. <laughs> quail grow fast. They they produce eggs fast, mm -hmm. and you can butcher them fast. Yeah. They are the ultimate homestead animal. So like, you know, eggs by six weeks, seven weeks, butchering by eight. They reproduce within a few months and you have enough to harvest again and eat. So they're very they're, efficient. They're they're great and prolific uh, animals. And they're a great addition for a homestead. So I guess I don't need to talk you in the talking to other people into raising quail. No. No. <laughs> Everyone should do it. Everybody yes. should. Everyone yes. should do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's so, why, why we have our channel. We love promoting and educating and enthusing everybody into getting into quail. So, 
So I've been asking everyone that I interview, is uh, being a quail farmer a cult? <laughs> cult? Uh, it's more like family. <laughs> more like family. Yeah. That's good. Maybe not one person says it's a cult. <laughs> so it's just not quail over at no. Whiskey Tango no. Farms, right? Yeah. We've yeah. also got rabbits. We have silver fox with creme de argent rabbits that we also sell for breeding show meat. Um, so we really like those. We have some ducks as well that we use for meat and show. Chickens, all sorts of fun stuff. And hopefully someday when we get more land, we'll have even more. But those are the big things right now, so. Awesome. I'm gonna make sure and put a link in the description to all, everyone I talk to here at QuailCon, all their awesome. websites and just check out their farms and support them because this is important to be closer to your, your food, just know where it comes from. Just, I mean, I, I feel like it's something that's lost these days. Yeah. It just This is just an amazing thing to be involved in it and just get closer to your food and understand where it comes from and all the hard work. And these people are working hard. They're working hard. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. These are our brooders. I do have chicks to move. So anybody that wants to move a couple of chicks each in the brooder, it'll be a lot of fun. A lot of people are enjoying it. We're moving in there. Uh, we put a water, we fill that up every day. There's a sink right in the corner over here. <laughs> Nothing special, just sink. Um, and then we fill that up every day. We put that real close to the heat source. Put eggs in on Fridays, every Friday. If I'm not ready by Friday, eggs don't go in that week. It's every Friday, consistency, consistency, consistency. We're allowed to agree to disagree, but I don't like to recommend because it is a very affordable price for how many eggs you can fit in there. And if it works for you, then that's wonderful. I have it and it sucks. Yeah, it but sucks. it doesn't work for me. So. Oh my, whoa! Good catch. Good <laughs> see how they are? Yeah. Okay. Couple them so they can't jump out. There you go. Now, now take them over to over there and put them in that other bin. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Cup them so they don't fly out of your hand. I'm gonna go. He's gonna get struggling. He's gonna be a failure to thrive here. Yeah. There's you, Nathan. Be careful. I need some help. Okay. Your sister help you. Who wants to see the three new colors? I'll accept it, but I wasn't super happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the right bird. <laughs> <laughs> the hen, it's been bred. It's one of my older breeders. And she's big. She is big. She is big. It is our third generation. Got myself a new shirt saying, I support small farms. I mean, I guess you could read it. <laughs> Yeah, so this is day two of QuailCon. Yesterday was quite an interesting day. There was a lot of cool things going on. The weather was not cooperating, however. It rained all day, essentially. It was it was okay in the morning, but it rained all day, and it just rained and rained and rained and rained. Our family was out here camping. I was like, everything got soaked in the tent, and we decided to go home last night because we could, because we live 15 minutes away. I was hoping to get more interviews in yesterday, but just with all the rain and, uh, oh yeah, my son was in the bouncy house and got all wet because they're, they're just having fun out in the bouncy house. And he went from the bouncy house back to the tent. And at the tent, uh, there's like a, a wood stack and he got up on top of it and jumped off with his bare feet because the shoes were all wet and uh, cut his foot open. And so when my wife and Four other kids got out here to join us uh, she was greeted immediately because it happened like one minute before with uh, a ride to the emergency room where he ended up having to get stitches and there was a piece of wood stuck in there there's a chance that he's gonna have to go back to the hospital in a few days and have uh, someone try to get that piece of wood out because they're on vacation for the weekend that did not go as planned <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about my dad. Uh, I'm the oldest of 10 children. There's been times that I've noticed some crises going around and him kind of just being able to like to sit back and like kind of, you know, be involved, but just kind of just seem very chill about it and just relaxed. Like I've been here before, or these are the types of things that happen in people's lives where they get you to that point. And I'm hoping just because I was like, I'm not sure what to do. You know, I wasn't freaking out too much, but it's like, you don't know what to do. You don't know what the right call is. You don't want to make the wrong decision for your child. You know, sometimes there's tough decisions and sometimes there's no win situations. But with experience over time, you're able to kind of sit back and just kind of glide through it a little bit smoother. And I'm like, yeah, I was just reminded 
you know, this stuff that seems bad in the moment, like having to endure a, a completely rainy day or your child getting injured and, uh, you know, things not going as planned. I really wanted the, my wife to come out here to the quail con and experience just the community that's out here. Walk around, show her off, right? Show off all my kids. It didn't go as planned, but that's okay. That's okay. Accidents happen. I mean, except for the fact that I told them not to get on that wood pile the night before. <laughs> But, you know, I can't get mad at him. He's a kid. And my wife reminded me last night. She said, just like how you're reminded about seeing your dad being able to glide through these things because he's been through it. Your son Jacob hasn't gone through them. And so I'm in a different spot than my dad is. My son's in a different spot than me. Life is a journey of learning and learning from your mistakes. And some have more consequences than others. So I'm... I'm giving him a, I'm messing with Jacob a little bit because I'm like, you just want to be like your dad because he injured his right foot. So we'll both be limping like this, <laughs> just everywhere. Just want to be like your dad, huh? You write out your goals on paper on purpose. You write out time frames. you do very specific, and then you print that sucker and you put it by your bedside table. You put it in your bathroom wall. You put it on your fridge. You put it in your car. You put it in your wallet. You put it everywhere you go. Uh, that's 14 gauge wire. If you guys are gonna raise adult quail on wire, please use coated. I cannot stress it enough. Hardware cloth is not gonna last forever and it's going to hurt their feet. Don't know what a celadon is? It is a bird that lays a blue, or a quail, sorry, that lays a blue egg. Um, that's all it is. It can have any, as you can see from the other slides, it can have any pattern, it can have any plumage. So if somebody says something about a celadon, you can't um, show a picture of a bird and be like, is this a celadon? Here's my nice pink shirt I got, supporting local farmers. I like it, I do. So this is, you guys. Yeah, this is Dale from Dale's Quail. Hey guys. Hey, I've never met him before, but I've heard of you. I've, I've seen all the Myshar videos of the brooders and all that stuff in the cages. Who's that? Oh, Zach Myshar. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of Myshar before. Yeah, a couple times, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's where we're at, but. Yeah, Miamisburg. So, you guys aren't here, you're missing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, tell us a little about your business and what you do. Uh, so I try to offer affordable quail setups. Uh, not, you know, I like Winella Ranch a lot. They're a good company. Um, Hatching Time's another company you guys can use, but we just build nice small wooden cages for people. Uh, easy to put together. Yes, yeah, so you got little ones with you. That was a big thought behind what we do. Like I want to offer something that people can build themselves. Uh, it's not quite DIY, but it is kind of DIY. You know, it keeps my cost down, keeps your cost down. So. Yeah, I've we seen just, some of your we videos. Run through where all, all the jigs set up and yep. just kind of. Yeah, I live in my workshop. Down. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I drill wood and cut wood all day long. So. Okay. Yeah. So, do you raise quail yourself? I do. Yes. Um, so half the business is a is the cages, and the other half is uh, the quail, the eggs, the meat, and I also do peak and ducks. Oh, peak and ducks. Yeah. So we do uh, duck meat, duck eggs, stuff like that. So. Uh, everything on our property is edible, except for the kids and a cat. I mean. Times are tough. The cat does look good, but I, I tell I tell my family I was like we raise livestock. Yes, not but we live in the city. So do I. So, yeah. I live in the middle of a town, dead center. Yeah, awesome. That's why we do what we do with quail. I mean, you can put so many in a small space. It doesn't have a big footprint. Is that why you chose raising quail? Yeah, it was kind of. I got lucky and I just came across it and I saw there's no regulations and I was like, we'll try it. And then now look where we're at. I mean, it just organically grew from five birds to the business and the cages just kind of came out. People saw what I had for cages and wanted them. So I built them and it just kind of snowballed and go. I like that's, it. Yeah, that's a, personally, I really like it when like you just do something all of a sudden that you find yourself in a different place. Oh yeah. Of, you're not like, forcing anything. How, how did this happen? Yep. And it's something you enjoy doing and something you're passionate about. It is. Um, teaching people this stuff and seeing them build it, getting the feedback is, is my favorite. And we are where we're at because of the feedback. Trust me, I make a lot of mistakes when I build things. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what I was doing when I got in the quail. I didn't know Zach from my show. I didn't know anybody when I got in the quail. I just kind of winged it. And um, because of people, where we're at and I've, I've learned to hone in on what people want and yeah it works so what's the best way people can contact you uh you can get right from the website 
Dale's Quail. Facebook, same thing. Dale's Quail is on Facebook, and um, I'm super backed up right now. And my emails and text messages are blowing up every day. That means the stuff's good. <laughs> I appreciate it. I um, I have to actually limit the time that I spend on my phone checking that stuff. So I used to be like, as soon as I got a text message, I'd be on my phone instantly answering it. Uh, so now I try to do it in the evenings and on weekends. So make sure and just take out Dale's Quail. Right, he's backed up super right original. now. That means it's good stuff. Right? I, I, I want to say it's good stuff. So you're supporting a, a local guy. Yeah. Where are you, where are you Wisconsin. from? Wisconsin. 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 I, don't, I can't do it. Hey, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Make sure and check him out. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Everybody, I'm with Chris Carnes of Slightly Redneck. And uh, Chris has uh, been posting videos about quail and rabbits for how long? A long time. Like uh, almost 10 years now. 10 years. 10 years. Quite a while. And he's been the, the best. I'm the first and the best resource I've ever had when it came to like raising quail in your backyard. Well, thank you. Yeah, so you probably owe me money. Um, I probably do, yeah. I probably, <laughs> you're good luck collecting on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From uh, getting me involved in all these things, like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, I probably owe your wife money, don't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. well, that's where it all, it, all, it all goes to my wife anyway. So, yeah, so. If, if she's watching right now, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to do that. It's okay. And yeah. Well, she said yes. So. <laughs> why, why quail? You know, I live in town. I mean, I live right in town. It's not like I live on you know some little dinky back road. I mean, I live in a big, fairly good sized town. Not big, but it's it's a city. Um, so I'm kind of limited with what I can do as far as livestock goes. Chickens um, are, I could do chickens, I can have them for eggs, but I'm limited on the numbers I can do. What I can't do is produce meat chickens on a regular basis. Now I can do, like I, I do a spring run of meat chickens, but I can't do, I can't have a rooster in town. So I can't get fertile eggs from a chicken. I can't incubate egg chickens and hatch them out and do that on my own. I'd have to buy them from other people constantly. And I'm limited with how many chickens I can get away with. People start kind of complaining if you have like a you know, huge backyard full of chickens, you know, and it, it becomes a nuisance to people. So quail are a little bit different. I can do quail in very small area. The neighbors don't even know that they're there unless I tell them they think they're songbirds. I can have quail roosters. I can incubate eggs. I can hatch out as many quail as I want. And you know, anybody that's raising quail, as you know probably, you can ramp your quail production up incredibly fast. You get a lot Lot of quail a lot real quickly so that's a constant um, so meat supply and an egg supply I get two and one with the quail whereas with chickens I can only have a couple of chickens only for egg production so that's kind of why I chose to go with quail and then you know of course add that to the rabbits it all works out really well for an urban you know just kind of a backyard uh, meat supply that I can produce I can do the garden I can do the rabbits I can do the quail I can do a run of spring meat chickens I got quite a bit of meat that I can put in the freezer, yeah. quite a bit of vegetables and eggs, and you know, water feed, our, feed our family. I mean, that's what it's about. Yeah, and so I, I guess you already answered my second question is like, should people get in the quail? Uh, I, mean, I guess it depends. I mean, if you want to, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great um, alternative to raising chickens and things like that. It's a, There's lots of people that do it in a spare bedroom, in an apartment building, in a, in a, they do it in apartments. I mean, can you imagine having a bunch of quail in your apartment? Even a spare bedroom? In a spare bedroom in your house, you're right. And uh, or in your garage, you know, and it's, I mean, they're super easy to take care of. They um, are incredibly um, productive. I mean, you get an egg a day out of these birds every single day. It's just, it's a fantastic food source. Plus, it's kind of a novelty. I mean, there's a lot more people doing it now than there used to be. But at the same time, it is still kind of like most people are not raising quail or have never heard of raising quail. When you say quail, they think Bob White's, they don't think Caternix. Uh, they don't, and you bring, um, you, you come to a party with a tray full of deviled quail eggs and you're the star of the party. I mean, everybody thinks that's the most amazing thing ever. So it, yeah, it's, I think everybody should raise some quail. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, it's not a, not a must, of course. Yeah. So is uh, the quail community kind of like a cult? Oh, don't, don't talk about it. Okay. The first rule of quail, cult. no, I'm kidding. Um, no, it's actually, you know, this is funny. We were talking about this yesterday. This quail community, there's a lot of people here that don't necessarily raise quail, like especially some of the vendors and things, they don't necessarily raise quail, but they, they did it one time or they do maybe a little bit, but they're in this community because it's such a great community. Um, the people here, I left, I had my camera here yesterday. I was tied up all day doing butchering yesterday, uh, butchering shops for, for people, you know, that were new to it, had never butchered before. We were doing that. I had my camera sitting out on a table with my camera bag, all my lenses, everything sitting out there all day long. Not a single person messed with it. 
Um, and it's one of those things where you just kind of know you don't have to worry about that around here. I could, I don't, I wouldn't worry about locking my truck. I don't. I'm, it's just a good, close knit community. There's. This is the second year we've done QuailCon. We're seeing a lot of the same people here from the year before, so you start to build those relationships with these people. I haven't met anybody that's not what I would consider a good, wholesome person. You know, they're all, it's its just a really good community to be in. I have not in. met any weirdos. No. Well, I mean, there's some weirdos. I'm one of them. <laughs> I mean, but, I, I, uh, I guess it's me. <laughs> yeah, we're all weirdos in our own way. Yeah. But, you know, there's a difference between being a weirdo and being a bad person or something. Yeah, I know, you know yeah, so. yeah. Check out Chris Carnes over at Slightly Redneck. You can find them on YouTube. Is, there yeah. any, is that the best way to contact Yeah, you? that's probably the best way. Um, as far as contacting me goes, mm -hmm. I don't, um, I'm, I've not been good about responding to comments for a while. Yeah, I got a full-time job. I'm kind of busy and kind of lazy sometimes too, yeah. so that's part of it. But I know you um, do but live I do live videos. broadcasts on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Central, and um, I do a pretty good job of responding to all the chats that come in during the live broadcast. Yeah. So if you have a question about quail, a question about rabbits, you want to, that's probably the best place to awesome. do it. On yeah. Thursday Day evening seven o'clock central i'll try to get better at responding to comments we'll see about we'll that see how that goes oh so, yeah i'm here with eric and he's actually from the area out yeah, here yeah. and uh he, you guys are just getting your first quail that's correct yeah so we we started looking into keeping quail maybe four or six months ago and had kind of put it off until now thinking if we don't get them before quail con that this would be a good opportunity to uh really just jump in with both feet yeah, so what got you interested in doing the research on quail? Uh, self-sufficiency, okay. uh, mostly. So we live in suburbia, but um, self-sufficiency has always kind of appealed to our family. Mm -hmm. And I used to keep bees when we lived in New Mexico. Um, so the idea of being able to keep quail and, you know, harvest eggs or meat or that sort of thing um, appeals to us. Mm -hmm. We've got three daughters uh, who we homeschool. So there's also sort of an educational aspect to it too, getting them more familiar with where their food comes from. Yeah, so how did you come up with that burden for that? With what? The burden for wanting to be more self-sufficient and yeah. teach that to your kids. Uh, pro it? Probably mostly because that's not how I was raised and okay. it's not how my wife was raised. So, you know, being more connected with where our food comes from and maybe just being more resilient to change uh, whether it's economic or what have you, mm -hmm. um, uh, just the ability to, to provide for our family um, and, and, and having a stronger sense of where things come from, I think just makes you appreciate it more. So I was going to say, you know, where do you hope that's leading you and your family? You yeah. said the word appreciate. Yeah. I mean, um, in the short term, I'd say, uh, you know, more, more gratitude, more thanksgiving to God for, for how he provides for us. Um, you know, food doesn't come from the store. Uh, food comes from nature. It comes from his, his design. But then at the same time, you know, longer term, if we're able to sprawl out and uh, a bigger space, more land, have something that's more, more self-sufficient, not just quail, um, out of our small operation, that's what we would like to do. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just so interesting because George over here introduced you mm -hmm. like two minutes ago. Yeah. It's got some guy named Eric and I'm Aaron, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's, he lives close, right? Yeah. In, and so do I. And, and you're talking about self-sufficiency and homeschool. We homeschool our kids also. Yeah. And I kind of like kind of gleaned out of you, like, you know, the be, you said appreciate and you said be thankful, thankful mm -hmm. to God. And that's, that's the reason I got into it. Yeah. And it's just, it immediately came to my mind, like, get out, you know, get out and do some research, research or get involved in the things that you want to appreciate and get involved in the community because you'll find people mm -hmm. you even know that are thinking the same thing as you, having the same type of burdens, yep. trying to teach the same types of lessons to their kids and values, they're just right out yeah. there and values and all those things. Yep. And um, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. <laughs> so. I, I think this has been a neat experience for all those reasons. We're on this precarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, found another guy named Aaron out here. Aaron Guitros? Yes, Aaron Guitros. He runs a urban farm in Louisiana. South Louisiana. South Louisiana. So, I'm going to ask him some questions. Or why did um, you get in the quail? Got in the quail. My wife and I have been homesteading for 20 years. We got in the quail because it's the meat chicken of birds, you know. So, you get a fast turnaround and we're real big on self-sufficiency and we try to help people in our community to learn mm -hmm. about that. You know, we raise meat rabbits and chickens and quail. We have Caternus quail, Bob White quail, Tennessee reds. 
Oh wow. We have turkeys, pheasants, ducks, geese, pigeons, several breeds of rabbits. We just raise for ourselves and we sell some pet rabbits, but mostly everything's meat rabbits and self-sufficiency. We have a garden. We sell our vegetables locally. We do our own canning. You know, we try. Our goal for 2022 was to at least one meal per week come from our yard with nothing outsourced so we can have that and i think 2023 we're going to try for more we have um three kids our daughter's older she doesn't live with us anymore so i have a 16 year old son six year old son the 16 year old son he's the builder the six year old son he's the butcher so it's it's real fun um i like to spread awareness and you know try not to rely on everything especially with the pandemic mm. you know so things were scarce august 29th 2021 hurricane ida hit our community so we were without running water for 12 days, no electricity for two months, no cable or internet for three months. So no grocery stores. Mm. What do you do for food? Hurricane Ida came through. Most of our animals fared out well. We had a lot of deaths and then we just lived off of the stuff we had canned and you know, our own meat and everything like that without having to go to the grocery store for two months. That's it, awesome. You know, we were walking and getting five gallon buckets of water from which we call a bayou, which y'all would call a creek. We would get buckets of water for our animals and wash dishes and stuff like that. So that kind of hits home, you know, once you do without and you have to figure it out. I just wanted to say, I really like the fact that you're like translating from bayou to creek yeah. for me. Cause I'm like, hey, now yeah. it, it took me 44 years of, <laughs> to, for someone to tell me what that actually yeah. meant, the difference. Would you recommend quail to people as a good starting animal? Yes, quail are pretty easy because in most climates, you only have to brood them for three weeks. Then you can put them out. They can handle extreme temperatures, extreme heat, extreme cold. You could get fast turnaround. That's, my selling point on quail is you could take some eggs, put them in an incubator. 17 days later, you have quail. Then eight weeks later, you're eating those quail. And so, eggs. And, and eggs. Yeah. So you you know, you have a 10 week turnaround that from an egg mm -hmm. that you could be eating. And they multiply fast. So if anyone was trying to get a hold of you, you guys have a YouTube channel. How would they get a hold of you? We have a YouTube channel, Geetro's Urban Homestead on YouTube. And same thing on Facebook, Geetro's Urban Homestead. Okay. It's a G-U-I-D-R-O-Z Homestead, Urban Homestead, I'm sorry. This questions I've been asking everybody and it's kind of weird. So do you think the quail community is kind of like a cult? I wouldn't say a cult. Well, I how think, would you say it in Louisiana? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just a group of like-minded people, yeah. you know, with the same goal in mind. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, you have people that raise them for meat and people raise them for fun. Yeah. You know, you have people that have two quail, you have people that have 2,000. It's just a fun community. Yeah. And I find on social media, Facebook, that it's a helpful community. Someone will post, hey, I'm having this problem with my brooder, I'm having this problem my grow out cage and people are always willing to help Make sure you check out their farm on their facebook and their youtube you said that, like after the hurricane and stuff it kind of derailed your guys's life and yes. changes things up but make sure and check them out give them some support and he's right like i asked the question like is this a cult you know just i'm trying to be funny i always <laughs> think i'm funny my kids don't think so whatever <laughs> i don't care right but it's but it's it's more like like you talked about, the it's an awesome community. I've not met one person that like that seemed off to me. <laughs> you know, not to be rude or anything, but like everyone just seems kind and courteous and and just you know, and maybe maybe that comes from self sufficiency. Like just being around, raising your own food. Like the last guy I was talking to, it made him more of a thankful person. Yeah, made him a way more thankful person. He's trying to teach his kids that. And that's why I did it. I assume you've learned a lot of those things too. Yes. And, and I think that it makes a lot, of, makes you humble and thankful. And it, I think it just makes you an overall better person to be able to get closer to your food and connect with it. It's changed my life. Yeah. I bet it's changed yours too. Absolutely. So he's going to say, just do it. Yeah, just <laughs> jump into it. Nine, one, yeah. Zero nine one seven eight 
four, eight. Yo, bingo. I got it. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah. Good job, Grace. Good job, Grace.